My name's David Trainer, and I'm a spirit medium. I have been a spirit medium um, from a child. Um, my parents were undertakers, and as a child, I used to talk to people who are in the spirit world, and it was a wonderful experience. And um, it freaked my family out no end. Um, and I used to lie in bed at night and uh, I'd have a visitation and uh, in the morning I used to get up to try to maybe only about five or six and tell my parents about it and more often than not it was a visitation from the person who my father had collected um, as an undertaker collected during the night they'd have passed away and uh, I was connecting with them and uh, it used to freak them out big time. Anyway, um, when I was about seven, uh, my mum, she was uh, cleaning for the church. She used to get up every morning um, about 5.30 and uh, she used to clean at the church and uh, in, in our parish and um, make the priest breakfast and how they did many years ago uh, too many years ago really and uh, and um, one day she mentioned it to the priest and the next thing I knew I had a, a Monsignor uh, from the Vatican come round to have a chat with me um, wanting to know about my gift and uh, he came in and sat down and uh, he asked uh, my mum and dad would I um, sit down and would he be able to sit down and have a chat with me alone which was fair comment and uh, and he sat me down and he said now you've got this ability what do you think you're doing and uh, I just said well I know what I'm doing. <laughs> he just looked at me and he said, uh, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm com- communicating with spirits. And uh, he said, and do you like them? I said, of course I like them. <laughs> They're my friends, <laughs> which was lovely. And uh, then he asked me to tell, tell him about him and uh, his life. Could I do that? And he was a complete stranger. And, uh, it was Irish. She was very nice, actually, um, and it breaks all the myths about um, Catholic priests, really, because he was he was lovely. He was such a nice person, such a genuine uh, man. So I did, and uh, he'd had a very difficult life, and uh, he'd been brought up um, in an orphanage, and it was it was quite a sad story, really. Um, his mother had passed over to the spirit when she was young and it, and it was it was sad and uh, halfway through I could see he was going to cry because they're only people and they're only human beings and uh, he just said stop stop there right now you're fine okay stop there and right now David and it's nothing to worry about and in my kind of old headedness as a seven year old I said I've never been worried about it. <laughs> it's always just been me. And um, yeah, he walked out the door and he said to my dad, uh, John, your son's got a gift. Leave him alone and he'll grow out of it. And of course, I didn't. <laughs> and that's who I am today. And um, it's been wonderful. And uh, then um, I. I obviously grew up, obviously I was very different at school, uh, I was quite bullied at school believe it or not, that, that was quite a bit crazy really, a bit of a crazy time because I didn't think that I was anything different to be bullied, I had a bit of a girly voice, um, I don't know why, that was just my accent and uh, um, but I wasn't anything different to be bullied and uh, but yeah I was bullied and 
it affected my education. I um, I was at school, a bit crazy, and uh, when I was in the infant school, uh, the headmaster said that I was university material. He said, "Your," he said to my mum, "Your child is university material," and uh, then. I got I started to get bullied and it stuck with me and I was bullied all the way through the infants, the junior and the senior school and I walked out of school hardly being able to read and write, uh, didn't take an exam, um, the teachers knew that I was sneaking out of the exams and I didn't even take one exam, I sneaked out, I've climbed out of windows. Um, I've shitted down drain pipes, I didn't take one exam and I came through school, came out of school at 16, not being able to read and write. Uh, I, my parents uh, didn't know what to do with me and um, it was crazy, my, my cousin She'd hope opened a, a unisex hair salon, and um, they took me along, and uh, I I went along and I seen the hair salon, and I said to my dad, "I'm going to be a, a hairdresser," and he said, "No, you don't want to be a hairdresser." It was that time when, you know, when if you if you were a male hairdresser, you were obviously gay, and um, my dad was very much a man's man and it was enough for him to swallow that um, I could speak to people on the other side of life and especially people he'd collected. Uh, then him to think that I was also gay. And even though I had this girly voice, I wasn't gay. I just had this girly voice. And uh, I went along for the interview and I can remember it quite clearly now. Uh, but just before that, what prefix that was, and uh, I'd got this thing then after seeing my cousin's son that um, I was going to be this top stylist. And I went to um, the shop and I bought a black hair dye. And by that time, I'd made some friendships, uh, which was really freaky. I don't know how I'd done it. I'd made some friendships, and they were all blonde. Until they met me, the demon hairdresser. And I spread this black dye all over their heads, together with my own. And turned white blonde people into jet black hair. And... Uh, Everybody was just disgusted that we were all walking around with black hair. Anyway, I, 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 uh, my parents then gave in and uh, I went for my interview at um, St. Helens College and uh, basically, I think they must have took pity on me uh, because I didn't even fill in the forms and uh, I got accepted. And uh, that was an education for me. Uh, there, I got a bit of support to be able to string a few words together, which was wonderful. And uh, I began to do my training. Came out of uh, St Helens College. Uh, fantastic, believe it or not, hairstylist. And by the age of 18 and a half, I had a chain of hairdressing salons. My own chain of hairdressing salons. And uh, as a young businessman, uh, supported by my parents, I continued, but I continued to know that I spoke to the dead. And uh, that was the humble beginnings of myself. Then um, I went on the stage, and uh, my, my parents were already on the stage by that time. Uh, my mum was a concert pianist, and my dad was a singer as well as doing the day job of the undertaking. And uh, yeah, I went on the stage and it was wonderful. And I met um, lots and lots of people. Um, and that's how me and my best friend Barry, who is now my manager met. And uh, one day 
I was speaking to Barry and uh, I just said, hey, you know what? I can speak to the dead. And he just looked at me and he said, I'm not surprised. And I just said, I just needed to tell you that. I can speak to the dead. Uh, by this time, by the way, I'd met my wife. Uh, we were dating and uh, then we got engaged and we got married. She was fully aware I could speak to the dead. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I broke that news miles before I got engaged. thought, I'll get that out of the way now because, uh, obviously, um, I, I needed her to know if she was going to spend the rest of her life with me. Um, she had to know that she might be spending the rest of her life with me and maybe a couple of million people on the other side of life so she was sharing me uh, anyway so i met barry and um, we went along we, we had a, a great relationship first of all we disliked each other i've got to say that um he bugged the living daylights out of me and it was as miserable as sin and then and I was a totally different person than what he thought. And uh, then something just snapped with us. We had common ground. Um, and uh, we got on famously. And now we're just like, well, we are just brothers. Brothers from different mothers and different fathers. We, we've had a friendship which has been the span of I can't even remember. And uh, behind every successful person is an amazing person who just does everything for you that's barry he's the other half of me um and my wife she's just amazing so uh, we went along to um a lovely little spiritual church called purple light uh, and we went along for the demonstration there was a medium on there i can't even think of his name now but it was packed to the rafters. We stood up at the back, actually, and uh, we'd never been to a spiritual church before, and uh, I was expecting that it would be all in the dark, and uh, they'd get the Ouija board out, and they'd bring the dead through, but it wasn't like that at all. Uh, the medium opening prayer, we sang some hymns, and uh, it's quite pleasant, really, like, because I had a really good singing voice, so I quite liked the hymns they sang. And uh, Barry was very flat, I've got to say. He sings flat. <laughs> I don't know why. That singing's not his forte. He'd hate me for saying that, but he sings flat and I sing fantastic. That's really been big headed. <laughs> anyway, he's got the best personality out of the pair of us. Um, anyway, uh, I stood at the back and the medium just said, uh, I'd like to come to you. So I just said, Me? And Barry was nudging me in. I said, yes, yes, hello. <laughs> and he said, you're going to be absolutely the most known medium on this planet. And I just looked at Barry and I just went, oh, here we go. And he just, he reamed off lots of things about me. And I thought, no, <laughs> it's not me. I had this successful booming business at that time. Um, I was in my late twenties. I had about sixty people working for me. I was Barry had come on board. He was helping my mum. It was booming, and uh, I didn't believe him. He told me I'd be in America, be a huge success in America, be on TV. He told me all these things. No, didn't get it. You'd write your own book. <laughs> God, it was like. Um, it was like predicting for somebody else and uh, of course it came true mad really true and uh, he was right and uh, we we uh, we went to a development circle at Preston Etherical we met a guy called Jim Rowe God bless him he's not around now uh, he was fabulous just fabulous no edge we walked in and uh, Barry said you must do this you've got to do this and I said so have you so we went along and Jim just said to me you're already a spiritualist medium I said well I know that really to be honest and he just said well you've got to go for it man and uh, that's what I did and me and Barry just 
uh, went along with it. Anyway, uh, he said, you, you've been to Purple Light? I said, yeah. And I'd, I'd met this lovely person called June. Oh, and still friends to this day. We're, we're very good friends. And uh, she said, I'll tell you what, David. I'm going to take you to see a really popular medium. So I said, okay. She went, you'll love him. I said, fantastic. I said, we'll go. I said, get me a ticket. So uh, she she said, okay, you'll pick me up. So I collected her. She didn't drive June. And uh, we went to um, Horwich, to this spiritual church. Massive, massive church. Lovely church, really. Uh, over 100 years old, beautiful inside and uh, it was full from front to back standing room at the sides the back and there was two seats reserved for me and june at the front on the front row there and uh, we sat down and i said gosh june it must be popular must be well no must be really good look at this i said masses i said she went, i know she went really is and then it started and she went she just looked at me and she went the medium is you and I thought, my God, what has she done? I said, June, you can't do this to me. Come on, we're getting up. And I went, are you joking? No, no, we get up. And you know, stood up there. And I gave, I don't know whether it's 15 or 18 messages, all accurate, and I'd never done it before ever. And it was just like the zonk. And then, I just, I went on the circuit and I just did it with obviously Barry as my sidekick and uh, it all fell into place. Uh, we met um, a publisher, published my books, a documentarian, did a documentary, Spirit Man, then another one, Joel Liston, My Psychic Life, did that. I went, um, I, I went on um, American TV, trended, 27 million people watch me on CBS and uh, I met a wonderful, wonderful actor, uh, William Shatner, and I did a, a reading for him and he invited me on his program uh, in uh, California and um, I, at that time, um, had lots of offers coming in. I, uh, met the vice chairman of CBS who was very interested in doing work with me and uh, then my mum took ill and I continued to do demonstrating and I never told anybody my mum was so ill and um, we had to move her in with me and I was on TV and uh, I'd just come off screen and um, I was one of the most watched people there and uh, I got a phone call from Barry, you need to come home, and my mum had um, took a, a two and a half hour journey and ended up in the Lake District in a police station, and uh, and it was the start of dementia, and it was very sad because I had a very close relationship with my mum. Uh, my dad died at 57, and uh, I took her out for her lunch every single day since he died to make sure that she went somewhere because she wasn't really greatly into um, going out and having friends and I, I used to take her out anyway and Barry knew it was important and he, he went down and he collected her and um, it was the start she had to come and live with me I just couldn't bear the fact uh, of her not doing and um, Barry He'd never married, he had loads of girlfriends, well not loads of girlfriends, nice girlfriends, nice person Barry and uh, he offered to move in with me and Andrew, we, you know, we live in a big substantial house, it's, it's got apartments in it and um, he's been a rock, he took over from running the business, uh, then he continued running the spiritual chores he did all the television work, all the preparing of the of the books, you know. And as I said to you, behind every great medium, there's two great people. My wife, 
was just a, a, an absolute uh, rock. And uh, to this day, that's the situation. My mum's 91, that's 14 years ago. And uh, I left it behind me. My, uh, I was um, invited on Broadway with Joe Franklin, uh, one of the most fantastic um, uh, writers for the New York Times. He saw me, he thought I was uh, alternative in the spiritual uh, sense. He thought I was very alternative, very different to the run of the mill communicating medium and uh, he invited me on board um, to go and work on Broadway. Uh, and uh, I obviously had to retract. Whilst it was pots of money, I felt my mum had to come first and that's where it lay. And then uh, now, uh, she's 91, I've got a lovely tour bus, she travels around the country with me, uh, indeed around the world, you know, um, and I'm still able to care for her, do my events and uh, with some relative success and uh, my career as a clairvoyant is just starting to take off again. But that's where I'm at, and um, that's been my journey, a potted journey of me, Spirit Medium David Trainer, and uh, yeah, I've loved it, I've loved every minute of it, I've embraced it, you know. Um, I think sometimes when you're on a spiritual journey, uh, you've got to trust and embrace, but most of all you've got to respect that you're on a spiritual journey. And uh, so I've trusted, I've embraced, and I've respected that. And in that zone, uh, that's where I've been able to remain positive, uh, publicly afloat, and happy with what I do. Um, I'm not expecting a great deal of audience. Brighton's a funny situation for me. It's only the second time I've been to Brighton, and uh, I never seem to get an audience here. Why? I don't know. Maybe there's too much going on for Brighton. It's got a vibe, hasn't it? So I'm only expecting a small audience tonight, but I will expect the communication level to be professional. I'm expecting that they come away with a positive, uplifting experience. That's what I like to give. It's not dull and boring. I'm not a dull and boring person. By no means, that is just not me at all. So you're not going to come across, uh, come along and it's going to be dull and boring. It won't be the case. And if I get two people coming along, those two people will come out with a positive experience than a negative a negative one. And I'll, I'll be very happy about that. Good evening and welcome to the Jury Museum here in Brighton. Can I ask you please to put your hands together and give a warm round of applause for Spirit Medium, David Trainer. Thank you very much, thank you. Very well, welcome to you here in Brighton. It's lovely to see you all. Everyone, before we do start this demonstration of clairvoyance and mediumship, can I ask you if you do have a mobile phone? Could you just put them on silent for me? Because we do only want messages of another kind, don't we? There's a joke there, you miserable. <laughs> it's lovely to see you anyway. And thank you very much for coming out and joining us. We never seem to get an audience in Brighton. I don't know what it is, but maybe this might turn things around a little bit. It's lovely to see you. Very welcome here tonight. Um, everyone, I just want to explain how I work, because whilst there'll be people in this room who have seen things like this before, there'll be people in this room who have never seen anything like this before. And I would like you to feel very comfortable in your skin with my guides, my inspirers, and your loved ones on the other side of life. I am a medium who moves direct. That means it's usual, I know whereabouts I'm going. So maybe I'll gesture to you, or maybe they will come down to you or gesture over to you. As a gesture over to you, I just ask you to put your hand up in the air. And then we'll put the audience microphone in it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Then we'll get you to sing New York, New York, or Mustang Sally. Okay. No, we won't. We'll actually just put that microphone right up to your mouth and just give us a nice, clear hi, David. That's it. 
just be nice and clear, hi David, through that microphone. That's all we're asking of you, okay? That is important because even though we're only a small audience here, we are, it is an audience participation situation and we are working as a group. So please, just a nice clear, hi David. And then I'll start to link with you. I'll start to connect with you. Now I am a clairvoyant, clear seeing medium. That means I see non-physicals on the other side of life. So as I link with you, as I connect with you, I will start to see and describe someone to you who you should understand. On the positive, yes, you know who that is. I'll go back and get you more information, more evidence. As I'm going along, if what I am saying to you makes sense, if it's accurate, I just need you responding clearly down the microphone saying, yes, David, that's right, yes, David, yes. If you don't understand, if it's inaccurate, or you really don't know, I just want you saying, no, David, no, no. Try and keep them a bit lower because I need to look good tonight, all right. <laughs> But just a yes and a no, please. That's so important. I don't do a maybe, could be, should be, would be, might have been, or may have been. Just a yes and a no, and that's fantastic. Can I say to you, I'll be giving you everything I receive, every word, every thought, every sequence, everything I receive, you will receive. But when I'm giving you this information, just think how it can apply to your physical world and the afterlife. One final thing, and this is very interesting. During this link and this communication, I'm maybe taken to art. And that's where a spirit who is communicating can draw their face. Or the face of another spirit who still relates, connects, or links with you, or people in the physical world around you. Just remember that, okay? Can I say the vast amount of people recognize the art immediately? If you don't, Go home, match it up with some photographs at home, and I promise you it could be nice and accurate to you and the family you represent. And that's all the prelims over. Can I just say, I always start with just a very, very short but true situation that has happened to me in recent times to give you an understanding of what to expect. Because as I said, there will be people here tonight who've never seen things like this before. I was recently in Nure in Northern Ireland. Is there anybody in from Northern Ireland? It's a lovely place. Uh, Nure. They're on the North-South Divide. And uh, there was maybe about 300 or 400 people in my audience. And I went to a gentleman at the back and it could only happen in Ireland. And I said, I'm coming to you, sir. I'm hearing the name of Jean shouted out. He said, no. I said, no, I'm hearing the name of Jean shouted out for sure, sir. No, no Jean. But I've got a friend called Eugene. <laughs> it's Eugene! Eugene! I said, no, sir. They don't have a sex change when they go to the spirit world. <laughs> I said, it's definitely Jean. So I took my board and I started to art. And all the time I'm giving the information. And he's saying, that's right, David, you've got that right. I can't believe it, that's right. And I'm drawing. And then I gave him the art. And you could not buy this. In front of all those people, he said, I can't believe you drew me Auntie Jean. <laughs> <laughs> but she's dead. <laughs> I thought you were, I thought you were a hypnotist. <laughs> <laughs> so please, I'm not a hypnotist. Now, I'm going to go into it, everybody. You should be able to get through vast amounts of you. The only way you can help me is just by saying yes if you understand and no if you don't, okay? All right, so I'll drink lots of water as I go along, and I might levitate at the end, okay? <laughs> Just for you, who's a uh, lovely miniature audience tonight. There's more spirits than people here tonight, never mind. Okay, so we're here tonight in Brighton. We're all up for a good night out, oh, yes? Yes. Yes. yes? yes! Fabulous. <laughs> Let's see how we go. Hello. No, welcome. Hi, come in. Yes, build up, build up, build up. Right, will you take me to, please? Right, 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 right. I want to go down to the lady just on the back row. She's hugging a bottle. Hugging a bottle. Hi, David. Oh, can I hear you? I can't hear you. Hi, David. Hi, very warm welcome. I've got a gentleman joining me from the spirit coming forward. Do listen to the description. As the gentleman comes forward to me, the gentleman, 
I'd call him thick set, quite a well built gentleman with quite a high forehead going on. As that man comes forward to me, that gentleman, he will need oxygen or would have needed oxygen and possibly with lung conditions. That could be lung cancer, emphysema, or COPD. And he's making me relate, connect, and link with you, sweetheart. And I want to say to you, he can only be either a dad or a grandfatherly vibration to you. Would you understand, please? Yeah. Perfect. And as he comes forward to me, you've been having lots of personal issues behind closed doors, he tells me, and he's been watching uh, around you to let you know he's been watching. Do you understand, please? I do. And as he comes forward, I feel that you've been emotional, upset, sad about what's been transpiring and going on around you. Do you understand? Yeah. And I want to feel that you're on the the beginnings of, of wanting to make a decision which could make your, like a life-changing decision which could take your life in a different direction. Do you understand that? No. God bless you. What's that got to do with? Right? Right? Now think about what you've been discussing with somebody else to do with either moving in a different direction with your work, your job or your career or there's been work or situations discussed which move you in a different direction, a life-changing, moving you on situation. And he tells me he's witnessed you saying that, and you don't understand that? I do. Per perfect. I don't, but I know what he's saying. He's telling me to say he hopes it goes well for you, because the change will do you good and make you feel better about the situation which is around you. Feel that you, I, I, I don't know you from Adam, but I feel what to say to you, that you're disappointed with somebody or you've been disappointed with a situation of the way you've been treated. Do you understand that? Yeah. And I want to feel hurt, trust issues, a breakdown of my trust, an invasion of my trust. Do you understand? I do. Yes. You get it? Yeah. Perfect. I want to also say to you, as he comes forward to me, that gentleman, he's just told me to say to you that he wants you to know that he feels sad about that. It's not what he feels he wants to see. And that's how he puts it to me. Would it be right in saying to you that just right now, either yourself or close to you, somebody's just looking at property uh, to move or indeed has just moved house? Do you know what that is? Say no to David. No. God bless you. What's that all about then? Right, 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 right. Yes. And I'm going to say to you, where that is, I feel somebody's just having problems with the neighbours. I want you to just think a second, but he's showing me. And I'm going to say to me, I want to believe that the neighbours are not that great. I don't think they're growing tomato plants. Need to think what I'm talking about. Yeah. Perfect. And I'm just going to say to you, very importantly, I've got to say that because he's making me say that, okay? That's all completely accurate with you. I'm also going to say to you, don't know how this says, feel that you just right now will have been either filling out forms or filling out some sort of application or filling out forms just right now is showing me. Do you understand, please? No. Bless you. Believe you. Seeing the forms, what's that got to do with? Right, right, thank you. Then I want to take you, you personally, out of the equation a second and say just close to me, I mean your family, I'm not talking about somebody up there over the great big stretch. I want to talk about somebody just close to you who's just filling out form, application forms. I'm going to say to you, that could be either for, um, that's not for work applications. That's for a different application. I'm going to tell you what I think that is. I feel that that could be either something to do with changing a bank account, something to do with a banking loan, or something to do with some sort of changing over of a financial situation. You need to just think a second. I'm still right with you because I'm seeing that around you as well. Can I just say as he comes for? thank you, where would I also connect you, relate you, or link you to the ordinary name of John, please? Would you know that name? Yeah. Perfect. And also the name, uh, the ordinary name of Marg, Margaret, or that name to you. Would you know that name? No. God bless you. 
Yeah, maybe I'll come in. Might be back with you later. You're very interested. I've got to say to you, very important, there's a little portrait here. And I'm going to say to you, I want you to watch why I talk about the filling out of the forms here. Something's not quite right to do with, and can only go so far with this, something's not quite right to do with it either. Uh, a banking situation, a bank situation or that scenario. I want you to remember what I said, okay. Uh, portraits there, with the love of spirit. God bless you, round of applause. please, for 50. So as you can see, everybody, as you can see, everybody, I'm not asking anybody any questions. I'm just doing this, just as it stands. Now, let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. Yeah, uh, hello. Feel I want to come to you here if I can, the lady in the corner. Close your mouth, please. Hello. Hi, David. Hi, very warm welcome to you. Just need to run something by you. Is that all right with you? Yes. Perfect. I've got a lady joining me from the spirit. If the lady comes forward to me, do listen to the description. The lady, she would be slightly shorter than me, of an average build, but that lady has got pain. Problems, pain in the chest area. Can't get round that lady. Can't do her own work and can't do her own functioning in her own home. As she comes forward to me, she's telling me, she makes me feel very close to you. And I'm gonna say she can only be either my mum or close to me. She's, she needs help, this lady, before she goes over. And she tells me to say that she was very lucky to have her family around her. You get the idea? Yes, sir. And I want to say, she can't, she should be, not getting her breath, walking around, panting, having problems. There should be the name of Margaret, Maggie, or that name. Yes, and she's shouting out that name to you. She tells me at the end, she goes over. Oh, it's all right, so we've got some tissues, Mr. Wilson. She goes over to the spirit like that, can get the chance to say goodbye to her family um, or some of the family. Yes, sir. Okay? Because, and I'll tell you what she showed me now. Would it be right in saying to you, she wanted to stay in her own house? She took hill and they brought the ambulance. She's saying, but she's telling me. It didn't work out that way. Yes, David. As she comes forward to me, she's told me to say to you, she crossed very closely to another family member's birthday or anniversary, right? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one week. Yes, David. And she's told me to say to you that she's fine. She's just some fine girls, I'm fine. She's been a bit worried about this young lady here because she tells me that you've been going through a difficult set of personal circumstances in your personal world and she's been dead worried about you. Yeah. That's what she's just said. Got the idea? Yes, David. Good. And a congratulations around you. I don't know why, but she's put a congratulations for a new start and a new beginning. Yes, David. And she's just told me to say she's watching. Okay? Uh, as she draws forward to me now as well, she's showing me it's Oh, she, this is how she took off. I was slipping out of consciousness. That's how she speaks. And she just said, I was going. <laughs> and she's just showing me one, two, three, four. Four people talking over it. One, two, three. Three people only walk in the room after, and one didn't make it back in time to say goodbye. And, yes, David. and she just told me to say to you, she just said, I couldn't believe it. I didn't believe in this shite. <laughs> I was going, I was going over, and I could see my mother. And that's what she just said. And she just said, uh, she was like me with care. Mm -hmm. So you had that relationship. You get the idea? Yes, David. Now, um, she's also now showing me, very importantly now, uh, here in the physical world, I feel either somebody's trying for a baby or somebody wants a child here. Oh, somebody, I think it's this lady. Can I just go to this lady with the microphone a minute for me? Hello. Hello, David. Hello, everyone, welcome. I'm just seeing wanting a baby children or something to do with babies around you. Baby talk. Yeah. Perfect, that's all right. <laughs> you won't be smiling after the seven sets of twins that are on the way. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> that's not a message, by the way. <laughs> Can I just say to you, they're just, uh, now you see, what's gone on 
is because you've all come as, along together, she's just relating the conversation to me, what you've been having, okay? And I just want to congratulate you for a brand new start and a brand new beginning. And things have worked out for you. They were a bit rocky at the beginning. I don't know what's going on, but they were. And they showed me that things have worked out for you. I think your husband has done very well for himself in a situation. Now, he could either be a manager at his own business or company, but he's done very well, correct? Yeah. Yeah? And I feel you have a lovely home. This is what I'm being told, a lovely home. And I feel it's a beautiful situation. Very lucky. I always thank God every morning for everything because it's so important because not everybody's the same, but you've done well and they're happy to see that, okay? And would it be right in saying to you that you've just been having part of your house refurbished or, or you've been talking about that? Um, no. God bless you, really believe you. Then where would I say to you that somebody's put in a silver grey wall? <sighs> <laughs> That's in my living room. Perfect. <laughs> now, why would it be saying to you that they don't, they only have as a receipt, but I believe you've been talking about having it taken or having it changed something because I've been, I'm, I'm seeing that they, they've been nosing about it. I'm not so sure whether it's not, it doesn't fit or you don't feel comfortable. It's not quite right anyway. Yeah. Perfect. So then, therefore, if I was to change that, I would be refurbishing. I'm only David, not God, but it's a nice house you've got anyway. And uh, it's, it is lovely anyway. But I just I want to talk about him in the physical world. Somebody could be a nurse, care worker, or work in a nursing family. She just told me to say to you that she really does think it's lovely. She's just said, uh, she's a lovely girl, David. And she's really eulogising about you, which is lovely, isn't it? Now, I know this sounds mad. Would it be right in saying to you, just in your husband's family right now, if somebody's just awaiting test x-rays and scans or not been too well here in the physical world, would you know that, please? Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah? And they may have to have a small surgical procedure, I'm being told. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I know you've all been worried. I wouldn't worry too much about that. All right. The majesty of the spirit world just tell us that things are going to be okay, and that's, that's what we live with. Okay. Um, I know you have been worried. They thought it was something a little bit worse than what it was. But it's not, so don't worry. Have peace. And um, I'm going to say to you, um, I'm also going to say to you now as well. Uh, right, right. Oh, right, okay. Really? That's lovely, okay. And um, I don't know how this is to you. Uh, would it be right in saying to you that there's just been either talk of a compliance change or there's going to be a meeting about a change coming around your work yes yes and if i said to you that that compliance change is just being discussed right now you should understand yeah and you're all waiting for the meeting and you've been talking to each other because you don't you did you, you're a bit you're a bit um you're a bit worried because you don't want to be split up from the lovely people who you work with yeah and they're trying to divide your team. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I've just had this conversation today. Fine. I'm a spirit medium. <laughs> if I painted you all grey in a Mr. Patch, you wouldn't be happy, would you? <laughs> uh, can I just say to you, uh, they're just showing me that. They're just showing me that. They're very annoyed about that, actually. And I do feel. So am I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ought to be because you're getting split up. It's already set in stone mat and it's not very good the, apparently uh, they're building a new part a new center or a new situation yeah. where you work and some of you are going to be going there um but sh they're just telling you that and i've just got to say that to you and i want you to be just very very aware now i'm going to say to you don't take what i said as a disappointment I, in many years that i've been a spirit medium more years than I care to remember, I look good because I'm full of Botox. <laughs> but uh, more years than uh, I care to remember, what I say to you is, it won't come as a disappointment because I've told you. All right, that's the outcome. All right, and I've told you. So, 
When did he tell you? He just said, oh, you know, so I made you told me. <laughs> <laughs> because there's somebody there who will glorify in that. Because you work with somebody who is not who they should, who really should be in that profession. You are a carer, a carer, a carer, a carer, a carer, a carer. You get it? Mm -hmm. And there's somebody who's just, it's in your pattern, and it's carer, 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 politician, jealousy. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. And that, sadly, is, is something that you need to understand, okay? And it's just with every profession, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Good luck with your new job. It's not really, I know it's not what you want, but, you know, I, I'm going to say to you, it makes me, doesn't make me feel too negative, that, okay? It makes me feel okay, really, so I won't worry too much about that. I'm also going to say to you as well, um, Ooh. <laughs> really? Is this something going on a dating site or a dating <laughs> site? <laughs> Can I just go to you, Nick? Yeah. Hello. Hi, David. Don't be laughing, love. It's nothing you haven't done. I'm going to say to you, I've seen a dating site or a dating situation, and I want you to watch that space, okay? And I'm going to feel a very good situation. Remember. At last. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> at last. <laughs> I'm actually going to say to you, I want you to remember I said this to you. How would I connect you to the name of Andy, Andrew, or that name? Do you know that name, please, physically? Yes. Perfect. Um, I, 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 <laughs> look at the face. <laughs> Shut up, David. <laughs> Can I just say to you, I want you to remember I said this, okay? Because there's a new beginning with the name of Andrew. Oh. <laughs> Watch that space, okay? But I am seeing the dating site, okay? And I'm just, I'm just going to say to you, for me, it's just more convenient that you're a busy person. Yeah. Like you're, because the way she showed it, it's your life's on a treadmill. And it's just, you, you never get, the, really, you don't get, you get the opportunity to meet these people, but they never quite work out. You're, everybody has a, a test in the physical world uh, when it comes to the physical world, and your test is relationships, because they never quite work out the way they should do. It's nothing to do with you. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to say to you, what they showed me, you see, they always, you always discover them either in a lie, a trust, they never ever, and that's been your multiple problem. Yes. And I'm going to say to you, what I'm going to say to you is, is it's because, actual fact, for you, that dating situation is the best route forward because you, you've got to go down something reputable so that you can understand somebody completely before you go any further because of the disappointment. And I want you to remember I said that to you, okay? Remember, everybody comes to life for a has a test. It's that is life, okay? And once you connect and you resolve that test, that test is gone and we move on into the future. Just remember that. That's your problem. It's because you've not learned. You just keep doing the set version of the same, going around in circles. It is right, that isn't it? Yes. And you fall for what they say. Yes. No! I always feel rat poison is the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but there's your portraits for yourself. Take Margaret's love. We're done on the script. Uh, the message from David was 100% spot on. Um, my nan passed away five weeks ago, um, and I was told. Um, I've, I've been to many mediums and clairvoyants before and I've always been told that there needs to be time between um, the death of a person and coming to see a clairvoyant. Um, we've always been into coming to these anyway, so we, th we just saw that he was here, so I thought we'd come along. Um, never in a million years did I think my nan was going to come through today. Um, so yeah, for us it's just really comforting to know um, that she's okay, she's happy there, she's with her mum, um, my great-grandmother. Um, and although she was speaking primarily to my mum and my sister, um, it all interlinks and it, absolutely
absolutely everything was spot on. So how many people was in her in her bedroom when she passed away, um, what happened, just, just absolutely everything, yeah. yeah. I can't I can't recommend them enough. Would you come and see him again? I 100% would come and see him again and um, we, we actually want to start looking at seeing if we can get a family reading um, so at a more personal level with David um, to see if we can get a bit more brought to the table. Say so my experience uh, tonight was very moving and I found that he was like very accurate on a lot of things he said to me however um, Someone didn't come through that I wanted them to come through, but that doesn't mean to say he wasn't accurate about everything else to which he was. Uh, one thing I didn't understand, but I'm sure when I think about it, it will come to me. Um, yeah, so I, I really, really enjoyed it and thought he was very, very good. Um, would you see David again? Definitely, yes, 100%. Yeah. And yeah. Would you rate him as um, one of the top mediums in the country, or would you say that you've seen better? Uh, out of all the mediums I've seen, I'd say he was the best. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Absolutely. Go to my website www.davidtrainer.com if they wanted to get hold of me. It's staff monitored. I see everything, everything, nothing that is given misses me. It's got to hit the staff first because for my security and, and etc. But everything, there is nothing, there's no stone goes on to it. It's dealt with professionally in every way, shape and form possible. And if anybody comes for seatings, my events, everything's dealt with with uh, professionalism. There's no, there's no other way around it. Everything's watertight. That's the way we work at Spirit Medium Daily Training. And uh, of course, that's because of the man at the top, uh, Barry, who won't let anything uh, just be. Everything's got to be just right. Everything. And, um, you know, if we've ever gone to a demonstration and we've had just two people turn up, so if we've had 3,000 people turn up, everything, everyone, every situation, every person is treated the same.